All right. Good evening and welcome. This is the um, meeting of the Pioneer Valley Regional School District School Committee. Um, today is Thursday, September 8th, 2022. Um, the time is 7.14 p.m. This meeting is being held via Google Meet in accordance with the Governor of Massachusetts um, 2020, March 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. Um, in addition to a link, um, in addition to um, in person, a link to view the school committee meeting um, will be on the website at www.pvrsdk12.org or you can view it at www.facebook slash BNC television. The public is welcome to attend in person or to watch via the, the links above, but in the event of an issue with the links, the public meeting in person shall continue to proceed. Uh, if you'd like to speak virtually um, via Google Meet during uh, a meeting, uh, during citizens comments please email citizens comments at pvrsdk12.org and I will call the meeting to order um, with a um, roll call attendance Melissa Gary present Nathan Swartz present Jeannie Milton present Karen O'Neill present Stephen Martin present Alan Genovese present Michelle Jerusso present <clears throat> and um, I see David. David Young, present. Thank you. And Raina Dastu, present. Great. Um, and do we have any citizens' comments from the room? No. And we don't have any virtually. So great. We'll go on to um, the minutes for August 18th, 2022. I'll move the minutes of August 18th, 2022. Okay. Oh. Um, I have a couple of... We have some corrections? Corrections, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. On page one, uh, near the bottom in the paragraph starting with Kinsella, last sentence should be, the result is a significantly more efficient organization. And on page three, number three, last line, it's noted the district is lacking in accurate job descriptions. That's what I found. Any other corrections or comments? Seeing none. Um, we shall have a vote to um, accept the minutes as um, corrected. So moved. And do I have a second? Second. Alan, oh. <laughs> okay. Um, and Melissa, you want to take it away? Melissa Gary, yes. Nathan Swartz, yes. Edie Milton, abstain. Karen O'Neill, yes. Stephen Martin, abstain. Alan Genovese, yes. Michelle Jerusso, yes. And David? <clears throat> David? David Young, yes. And Raina Dastu, yes. All right. Moving on um, to the reports. We don't yet have a student rep, um, but we're hoping that we'll have one appointed by next month. Um, the chair report, um, I don't have much to report on. Um, we're hopeful that we'll have an, an appointee for Bernardston soon, um, and more to more to come on that. Superintendent's report. Okay, thank you. Welcome everyone to a new school year. Mm -hmm. What a great start we've had, uh, and we started off with a new educator orientation that hasn't happened in a few years a small and distinctive group of educators. Uh, I took, uh, we'll talk about it in the personnel update. I took a, a look at our recent hires at the faculty level, and we're at about 50-50 in terms of folks who come to us early in their career, uh, in their first three years, and folks who have five to 10 or 15 years of experience. So we're about half and half there. Uh, for new educator orientation, I'll just read a few comments from the feedback. 
and their feedback form included prompts for the highlight was, I learned that, it would have been even better if, and I hope too. And for the highlight, uh, here's one, getting to share and discuss our core values. It was encouraging to hear how many were similar to each other's and the school's vision as well. Uh, uh, for I learned that, um, the opportunities for growth are seen as a shared responsibility. The district is changing in a positive way and that we all have similar core values. There are so many people pulling for this district. It was a wonderful day. Folks spent the first half of the day here and then went off to their buildings to spend time with their principals. Uh, secondly, opening day, let me start off by thanking uh, members Melissa Gary, Karen O'Neill, Stephanie Winslow, and Michelle Geruso, uh, who were able to make time to join us for opening day. This was the first time since 2019, maybe, Renee, that we've been all together. And uh, we were truly all of us, almost all of us together. We had our PVASP members were in attendance. Thank you to Food Services, who fed us a delicious breakfast. Uh, and the IAs and myself also benefited from a delicious lunch. Thank you to Senator Joe Comerford. What a highlight hearing the senator talk about what she sees coming up uh, in the legislature in terms of public education and her support in particular for rural school districts and the findings, wanting to talk about the findings of the uh, commission report on funding for rural districts. Um, I want to make sure I, I, I hit everything there. Um, okay. So you'll see me, I think I'm gonna stick with lavender. Uh, these are the feedback forms from that day. Uh, we had maybe 185 people in attendance. Uh, I'm gonna read you just a few um, of the comments. Uh, they were overwhelmingly positive. I am looking forward to a uppercase, fresh start of a school year. Excited for new things happening in the district. Excited to see fresh and happy faces today. Excited to hope for innovations in a small rural school district and being involved in dreaming for those solutions. And lastly, thank you so much for a joyful, hopeful morning. Boy, we can't ask for more than that to begin our year. Can we? <laughs> I am deeply grateful for the innovative ideas that are being considered for our future. So we had a, we had a great uh, beginning and then the rest of the day for me was spent with the instructional assistants who for the first time I think possibly for many of them uh, had uh, over a half day of professional development with just them there were about 40 people in the room and what we asked for from them at the end of the day was um, their guidance on what they think the district ought to consider when planning their professional development for the end of the year uh, so we have lots of rich information from them. Um, what a truly inspiring group of educators our instructional assistants are. It was just so gratifying to have time with them, get to know them better, hear from them, uh, be a participant in their conversations about working with students, what they feel they need to learn. Um, just a terrific start. And then, oh, uh, security. We've had our first fire drills. Thumbs up from all three buildings from our uh, wonderful colleagues in the Bernston and Northfield Fire Departments. And lastly, our students are back. And I was able to be present at Northfield Elementary for arrival on the first day. And I keep telling people, we could have made a video. <laughs> we could, it, people, it was, it was a, a moment of grace and beauty. Um, I was in the back of the building where there's family drop off of kids. And I saw child after child hop out of the vehicle at the appropriate and safe time <laughs> and run into the arms of a waiting, loving, known teacher and get hugs and, and have teachers say, can I give you a hug? May I? Is it OK? Hug after hug, smile after smile. And I saw one interaction with a, a student who was a little anxious, not sure where her classroom was. And a new student in the same grade had had a private tour of the building a few days before by his new teacher. And um, I told him that his classmate was anxious. And he said, I can show her. And he took her by the hand and led her into the building. So uh, it was just so, boy, it's what we want 
kids walking into a building feeling loved and eager for school to start. That is my report for this meeting. Thank you. All right. And now the Director of Finance. <laughs> what exciting things you have feeling to say Feeling the love. <laughs> yes, um, so I have exciting things too. Uh, <laughs> not to be outdone. Um, but I mean, first I wanna echo Patricia's comments. It's been great uh, to see all the um, faculty, staff back, um, obviously starting in June. I didn't necessarily have that opportunity. Um, extremely welcoming group of people. Great to see the students. I've visited all the different buildings um, and, 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 and tried to you know, see how things work at all the different buildings, um, but it's been really great. A lot of positive energy. So yeah, just echoing uh, what Patricia is saying. Uh, it, it's been a great start to the year and I'm extremely uh, proud really to be part of it. So very good start. Um, and on to the finances. Um, so I, I've included, continued to include um, both uh, fiscal year 22 and fiscal year 23 information. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually going to start with fiscal year 23 only because the, I know I'm, 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 I'm changing things up, but only because the only change to the fiscal year 22 information uh, regards the budget transfers. Um, so uh, I, I would move them to after the budget transfers um, mm -hmm. because otherwise there isn't really anything substantial to talk about. That's all that's happened in fiscal year 22 um, since the last meeting. So if, if there's no objections, I'll, I'll move on to the uh, fiscal year 23 expenditure report. Mm -hmm. um, so the green paper, once again, I'm remembering my, my colors here. Mm -hmm. um, so the green paper, um, and similar to last meeting, I'd just like to highlight the new account codes that have negative balances and just to keep everybody abreast of, of why that's yes. happened and, and that we're aware of it. And I, I also want to note that, you know, for fiscal year 23, we'll start making uh, budget transfers uh, once we, uh, it'll be, we may make some before, but it'll be much easier um, once we have uh, all of our ratified collective bargaining agreements because obviously um, we won't really know uh, final numbers until, the, until that's done. So for now, we'll be continuing to leave things negative but explaining as if, if any uh, line items have negative balances. So um, without further ado, I'll jump in. Um, on, on the first page, one item that uh, now has a negative balance and most of the new negative balances will have to do with um, salary encumbrances because now for FY23, all the salary encumbrances um, have been completed. Um, so um, with, with new salary amounts for certain staff. So mm -hmm. um, the, the first line item uh, is the financial clerk, which has a negative balance of $1,532.42. Um, and that's just because um, some of the line items had quite conservative uh, estimates for uh, salary increases for f fiscal year 23. So in, in some circumstances, the, the actual amount, the actual increase was larger than what was budgeted. Um, you know, overall, it's not a, a, a large negative balance, but um, it really results from, I would say, potentially excessively conservative budgeting in terms of, of, of that line item. Um, Jordan, yes. which, which item was that? I apologize. Uh, financial clerk. So it's. Um, you said it. I was yep, I know. I should give the whole account code, obviously. Uh, that, that'll be easier. So it's 0001.1400. So a uh, quarter of the way down. I don't see a negative balance. Neither do I. Um, in the 2223? Oh. Mm -hmm. I, I, I changed everything up. I apologize. No, it, they're both green. I know. That, that's, <laughs> we're, okay. I'm not doing anybody any favors by having <laughs> two green ones. You know, but the uh, green is tired. Thematically, it's, it's money, right? So, yeah. uh, I, I get it now. Thank you. Right, that's, apologies for that. No, no worries. Okay, so, so that's the, the first item, the financial clerk. Um, uh, second item is uh, the payroll administrator that has a negative balance of $2,595.15. And again, um, the, that, that really results from, uh, 
I would say excessively conservative budget estimate for for the salary for FY 23. Um, so ultimately, the the actual number was larger. Um, further down the page is the employee separation costs. Um, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Yes, I'm sure Karen, I, I knew Karen was going to find this. Um, <laughs> she's, she's a person of uh, extreme attention to detail, which is really great to have on the school committee. Um, and <laughs> this one really, it, the, the encumbrance is on the wrong line item. But um, as I was speaking to Patricia before the meeting, you know, uh, we, we want to be transparent even when mistakes happen. Um, it's an encumbrance. It's not actual um, anything that's actually been paid. It's just an encumbrance to the wrong item. The, uh, the amounts of health and, health and life insurance for active employees are actually being encumbered to, to that line item. So as you can see, health and life insurance for active has a very large one line above positive balance mm -hmm. and the next line. So, and they're very close to the account code. So it's really just a keystroke error. Um, and um, in a perfect world, I, I would have fixed it prior to the meeting, but our, our payroll person has been uh, out, out sick, so, uh, mm -hmm. but, but we will get that taken care of. That's an easy one to, to uh, fix. But yes, I, I understand your, your anxiety, Karen. I, wonder, uh, I wondered if everyone was leaving or what. I know, yeah. imagine that. Imagine that it's not happening. As, as Patricia said, positive, <laughs> great mood. We do not have that many separation costs. Um, so now moving to page three. Um, there's a uh, mm -hmm. negative balance on the principal salaries line and um, that uh, results from the fact that our, our principal uh, left after already completing some work and then we uh, hired another uh, person. So uh, one employee had already been paid um, and um, then another employee uh, came and, and is also being paid. So, so we'll eventually make a budget transfer. Um, to cover that expense. Mm -hmm. So moving on to page four. Before you go too far. Of course. On this page and the previous one, it seems like the telephone has gone quite up quite a bit. Yes. So the, oh. and, and, and so that previously was a negative. Um, and the telephones will, and, and that's a great question, uh, but the telephones will continue to go up because um, we've moved from uh, reimbursements for cell phones to uh, actually uh, paying the, the carrier directly, mm -hmm. um, which saves us money overall. Um, but in the budget, uh, nothing was budgeted for that change. So okay. it will continue to grow negatively, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we, will, we will move money uh, appropriately once we're later in the year and, and things are more solidified in, in the most important uh, categories, which are salaries. So, okay. um, but um, very good that Thank you, you picked that up. I, I'm just, I'm glad people are looking at it, so I, every, every time we hear something, it's exciting. Jordan, may I, may I jump in for a second? I want to uh, make sure the committee is aware that uh, when I arrived, I would say most of our administrators did not have a district-issued phone or reimbursement uh, towards their personal cell phone, and we have corrected that um, mm -hmm. omission. Mm -hmm. That's part of why the cost has gone up as well. Uh, good. So on page four, um, similar to the previous uh, one that was just discussed, the principal salary at, um, at uh, NES has a negative balance, and, and that uh, results from the fact that uh, we had the outgoing principal continuing to do work uh, during the summer to support the transition um, to a new principal. Um, so uh, that's why there's a negative balance there. And moving on to page five, um, the Dean of Student Salary um, also has a, a negative balance of $3,572.94, and that results from additional days being added to the uh, contract. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the next line item is the Nurse Salary, which has a negative balance of Twenty-four thousand four seventy-three and forty cents, um, and that is because eventually um, a portion of that salary will be put on a grant that we have every year. Um, but since we haven't uh, 
um, if the grant isn't approved yet, uh, we can't begin to put the salary on it. Question? So yep. would, they, would the previous year reflect the same amount that's going to be put on that grant towards that salary? No, uh, the, the one that you settled out in 22. Yes. So that has that grant already applied to it. Yep. To reflect that cost. Yes. And is it a similar amount? Yes, almost uh, identical. Okay. Thank uh, you. And um, so now going to page eight. Um, so the uh, special needs administrator salary has a negative balance of $5,162. And again, uh, that resulted from uh, budgeting, having a very uh, conservative budget estimate uh, versus the reality of, uh, of, of providing a market rate salary. Um, and um, the special needs psychologists um, has a very large negative balance of 80517 and 40 cents. And that's because um, during the budgeting process, we had put, um, we had put um, uh, over $100,000 uh, on the ESSER three grant. Um, which I haven't actually moved over because as we discussed in the last school committee meeting, we're trying to uh, keep everything on the general fund, um, get a good picture of, of where the general fund's at before making definitive decisions on, on how uh, we'll use uh, grant funding uh, to support uh, the uh, educational mission. So um, right now that's all on there, but uh, in the budgeting process, it was uh, put on the grant. So th those are the new negative balances. Um, and oh, right next to me, do you have a question? Sorry, oh, saying. well, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just excited for some action. I'm, I'm, I'm oh, too, oh, too quick. Minute, with this. I just want some like, questions. Hey, yeah. question. I'll come up with a question. This is this is oh. not. Um, come up with TV. It. <laughs> Good. Um, I have a question on page four. Yep. Um, the maintenance of building C. Um, yeah, I saw that. Up from the bottom there, it's a negative uh, 17 percent. Yep. In, in there again, a, a lot of a significant amount of all the maintenance and facilities was placed on the um, uh, SR1 and SR3 grants, which I haven't done yet. Um, so. Uh, so a lot of those line items will have negative balances until we so make we're it. We're looking at putting that on the general fund and then the it, Yeah, exactly. Once we once we uh, have a better picture of the overall uh, financial situation. Could you clarify one thing? Yes. Um, so we have changed the title, right, of the director of uh, pupil services, or, and so. Is that the position on here that says special education administrator, and we yeah. haven't changed that yet? So that, that, that's correct. So, we so we've changed it, um, you know, officially um, in the district. The accounting software um, hasn't, hasn't been updated. Okay. Uh, Didn't know if it was in two places. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yeah, I have two quick questions. Sure, of course. Um, can you explain why we have two superintendent salary lines on page one? Yep. It, it's a technical maneuver, probably, but will we have one going forward? Yes, we will. Um, okay. I, I wish it could sound as smart as a technical maneuver. Um, <laughs> but um, so um, I, I think we addressed this a little bit in the last meeting, but um, with, with David. So previously, um, we were uh, um, budgeting the superintendent's salary in the 1200 function, um, and it should be in the 1210. Uh, you know, I discussed this with uh, our, our fiscal mm -hmm. overseer, and, and she was just mentioning for end of year reporting, it would be best to, to uh, put it in the appropriate functional area. Um, and so we've done that now. Um, 
but the, the um, two items appear, in, at least for this year. Uh, going yeah. forward, it'll all be on the appropriate uh, function code, so the 1210, so the 1200 will disappear. Mm -hmm. May I go back to, Nathan, your question about on uh, page four, the maintenance of building C forward slash S? Yep. That C forward slash S stands for contracted services. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a discussion among um, the admin team about, uh, and Gretchen, including Gretchen, um, our spending on tradespeople and um, uh, beginning to look at whether it would make more financial sense to have someone on staff who has some, maybe not a licensed tradesperson, but someone who's got maintenance skills who could begin yeah. to take on some of this labor so that we're, we, we were relying less on contracted services from outside. So I just want, we'll be coming back to the committee mm -hmm. with um, initial thoughts on that conversation, but the conversation is taking place. Good, and, and then I was gonna move um, into the, uh, the budget transfers. Um, so um, I guess since we're gonna um, ultimately vote, uh, I'll, I'll read them off one by one uh, to give everyone uh, additional context, but um, overall, um, this was just another example similar to the last meeting where we were continuing the year-end cleanup process. Um, it's exciting this time of year. You often have three years going, so we're completing our FY21 audit, doing some FY22 cleanup uh, in FY23, but already thinking about FY24. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a fun time of year. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes even FY25 comes up. So. Um, I, I, I mm -hmm. yes, it, it, yeah. it, it can be fun in the accounting software when you start doing something in the wrong year. But um, <laughs> it's, um, so anyways, we're so in the FY22 cleanup process, um, we were taking, uh, similar to last time, taking some, some uh, things uh, from um, um, rural aid and, and moving them back onto the general fund. In this example, it was the district tech hardware purchases. Um, and, and then once we put that back on district tech har hardware, uh, that line item didn't have uh, money remaining, and so we've made these budget transfers um, from different areas to uh, cover for that negative balance in district tech hardware. Um, so we moved um, $11,822.02 um, from the special needs and structural assistant line into uh, district tech uh, district tech hardware. Hopefully I don't mispronounce it every time, but we'll see. I've got two more chances. <laughs> um, and then we moved uh, $10,733.40 uh, from special needs teacher salaries into district tech hardware. And finally we moved $7,932.76 um, from maintenance of building contracted services into district tech hardware. Um, yes? Were these Chromebooks that we were taken out of ESSER? Um, they, they weren't um, Chromebooks. So um, what had happened is, again, in a, in a, in a previous year's um, budget, so for the FY22 budget, um, the idea was to uh, use uh, rural aid rather than the general fund to, to finance uh, our district tech hardware. Mm. Um, and so I was trying to um, put that back on its appropriate budget line. Um, in you know going forward having appropriate budgeting to, to make sure that we budget appropriately for our district tech hardware okay thank you yep and um, returning to FY22 the expenditure report um, which uh, the the green paper uh, the other green paper <laughs> um, <laughs> the only again the only difference it would be on um, Page eight. Um, 
we see the overall budget balance is $224,438.65, um, which is, a cent is, is within a couple dollars of the exact amount of the, the money we move from one fund to another. So that's, that's really the only thing that's changed from FY22. And again, our, our uh, percent uh, of budget balance remaining, which will continue to change um, a little bit, but was 1.51%. So again, um, I think that shows um, once we move the uh, items where they should go on the general fund, that we have a appropriate budget. You know, one and a half percent excess, pretty pretty tight. So I think overall a pretty good job there. So since we're moving um, money across line items, y you. Is the chair entertaining a motion to um, approve the transfers as presented? Yes, I would like to enter entertain that motion. So moved. Okay. okay any further discussion? Melissa Gary, yes. Nathan Schwartz, yes. Dean Milton, yes. Karen O'Neill, yes. Stephen Martin, yes. Alan Genevieve, yes. Michelle Drusso, yes. David? Young, yes. Thank you. And Raina Dastu, yes. That motion passes. Good. And um, moving on to the lunch reports, uh, we don't have a full lunch report as we only had in the month of August one day of actual lunch service. Uh, so August 31st. Um, there isn't. So we'll have a complete lunch report uh, at, at the October school committee meeting, as then we'll have an actual month of food service at that time. Um, what I want to say about the lunch no, service, um, I've been uh, to several of them um, because um, you know when I started work, uh, I, I hadn't had the opportunity. So now that school started, I've, I've visited both uh, breakfast and lunch at, at, at the respective buildings, um, and uh, you know I, I think it's very impressive. Is um, we start to more and more return to normal, it's great to uh, see things going you know, back and, and seeing a, a cafeteria full of, of, of children and, and waiting in the line. Uh, and um, you know, obviously, there's some things to work out um, um, as we move from the previously completely federally funded free lunch to the Massachusetts version of that. Um, but I, I think we have everything in place to do so successfully um, because it's, it's, although the lunches are technically free for everyone, in terms of the how everything needs to work, um, functionally, operationally, it's back to how it used to be, where you need to know exactly at the point of sale who's getting what, um, and, um, and 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 record all of that at the time of actually serving the meal. So it's it's in that sense, I think it's a positive development. We're we're close to back to normal, and it's very positive that the that our state uh, has decided to support uh, the nutritional needs of the children. Mm -hmm. I think that's something to be super proud of. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and there's been great participation and it's been great seeing it um, and, and I really look forward to providing that report at the next meeting so we can see what the participation looks like compared to um, previous years with the federal program. Mm -hmm. Yes, so Dean. By any chance did you notice if there was much waste? In other words, was the students throwing away a big portion of their meal or was it pretty, plates pretty empty when they were done? Yeah, I, I think that there, um, um, how we serve lunch, I think at our school we're, we're doing our best effort to, to um, minimize waste. I, um, there's, I think there's always going to be some waste. I, I, um, I don't have a great metric, so this is kind of my observation. Um, that's, but, that's fine. But since our students have the ability to turn down some items, right, there's the, uh, I think it's, um, I'm, I'm maybe getting out of my depth in, in food service terminology, but I, I was looking at this and speaking to Desi about it uh, this week. But the the you know offer versus serve, and to try to reduce food waste, you know students, because there's some places with the high school you have to provide a choice. With the elementary schools, um, you you can either put all the stuff on and say you got to take it, or you can uh, have the opportunity for students to turn down some items. So we have that where students. Um, can turn down some of the items, so um, we're doing our best. I think our system um, is is maximizing uh, uh, or, or minimizing food waste, 
and doing you know every effort that we can. Um, you know, uh, when I look at it and it's so healthy, I think back to like seven, eight year old me. I might have thrown the whole thing away, but our our kids are are better than than seven or eight year old me because um, uh, our healthy eating habits in the uh, 80s and 90s were not what they are today. But it's great when you see the lunches and see all the the healthy food there. And you see a lot of the young people um, eating cucumbers and oranges is a, is a significant mm -hmm. part of their lunch. That was really great to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I have a question, um, and it may be the Massachusetts, on why there is a charge for milk for um, home lunch kiddos, um, which would bring in some food waste, potentially if they chose to get school lunch that comes with a free milk and doesn't eat the school lunch instead of me having to pay 65 cents for a milk to go with their home lunch? Great question. Um, so it really has to do with the, um, how, how the reimbursable meals are because they're reimbursable meals. So um, if you get a meal, it's free. Um, if you get uh, if, if you get something less than a meal, for example, uh, I get what, what's called an a la carte item. Um, it, isn't, uh, it isn't free in terms of uh, um, how, how DESE reimburses or, uh, for, the, uh, for, for the program. Um, so if we, were, if, if we provided milks free, um, and this could be part of a larger conversation, I think, actually as a school committee, yeah. um, this could be a policy discussion, right? Um, I, did, I wouldn't unilaterally want to say, uh, because there's a cost, and, and, and I, I think it would uh, likely be inappropriate for me to unilaterally say that, that we should give away milks, but it could be a policy discussion about where, where do we want to go as a school? Do we feel uh, that, you know, that, that we should be doing something differently? Because right now we're, we're behaving um, in what we think is most fiscally responsible, but if we had guidance or, 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 or a policy that said, well, in this circumstance, you can behave differently, um, I certainly would be open to behaving differently. But right now, wh why we don't give the milk away for free is that we don't get a reimbursement. So it's essentially, it's essentially giving away you know, the food service funds money. And without prior authorization, I, I, I think that that would potentially be inappropriate, or, or almost definitely be inappropriate for me to decide without guidance. Um, so, I know a very long answer to an easy question, but um, that that's why it is. It's not yeah, the my solution. Uh, my ten year old figured out that he should just order school lunch um, and get a free milk, and we discussed <laughs> the waste that mm -hmm. that would be. Um, but that's what he came home and said. That that is. That, that was our conversation. Good he, math skills there. <laughs> yeah, I. Yeah, it came, it came as a shock because he couldn't get milk that day. Or it, he could because I had money <laughs> in my account from pre-COVID. Anyways, it, was, um, mm -hmm. it wasn't something I think was prepared. Or yep. Families were not prepared for. Yep, yep, possibly, yeah, I, I think possibly a large discussion. Um, yeah, um, yep. thank you. Yeah, thank you. you're welcome. Um, and... Any other questions? Thank you, Jordan. <laughs> You're welcome. Can I, oh, can I oh. just say something, Raina? <clears throat> yes. I think we should have further discussion on this mm -hmm. because we voted to increase the school lunch prior to the state of Massachusetts giving milk free lunch. And I didn't know anything about the milk at the time of the vote. And so I think yeah. we should discuss this because if children aren't getting their milk because their parents didn't know about the cost, then I think we need to send a message to the children and the parents and that the school committee wants the children to have the milk. So. <clears throat> I may just ask in, in that consideration whether in <clears throat> the level of detail that we may need is if children have an option other than milk, if they are lactose intolerant or some other mm -hmm. concern, uh, do they have an alternative that we could also potentially uh, provide? Mm -hmm. Is chocolate milk a choice? 
think so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's chocolate milk. Yeah, I'm, I'm going outside of my realm of... of, <laughs> of Sometimes uh, there's strawberry milk. Strawberry yeah. milk. And I believe there is lactate. Uh, may I ask a process? Uh, Michelle, were you hoping that the school committee would discuss this tonight? Would the school committee like no. Jordan and me to... Okay. We I'm wondering have if... to do tonight, but I would like yep. to see us yeah. talk about it yeah. as a budget thing, too. And you know. maybe uh, Jordan and I can cook up some sort of trial run. Good uh, uh, you know, <laughs> That's a good pun. What a great good. Yeah. Oh. Hot milk, no. <laughs> Hot milk. <laughs> I'm, so um, I'm curious at what subcommittee, as opposed to f budget, would also be looking at the school lunches. Um, policy. Policy, OK. And um, because I do have some. Um, ideas that I would like to bring to the school committee uh, or to the subcommittee. Um, I wrote it down. Said. Yep. And <laughs> and um, just for your information, we have outdated policies about prices mm. in our policy manual, and um, we're really not doing anything about that now because we don't. We haven't had. We know we don't have to charge. Are they, so I'm looking for guidance. Are they outdated in the new policy manual that we're writing? Right. They haven't been changed because we were in the middle of free lunch for everyone. Yeah. But we had voted. We voted. We voted that. Um, was that before or after the state stepped in and said we're paying for this? Uh, the school committee voted recently on prices for this year. Right. right. So at the last the meeting. Not in the yeah. policy. I'm not sure. I didn't know that prices would be in the policy. I thought that doesn't that sound doesn't like it should sense. be in the policy. Yeah. They, they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be in the policy. The policy okay. should just be the overarching of governance what, yes. of how we're operating. Yeah. I think we decided that as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was last meeting. But we were just establishing them. We weren't necessarily saying we were charging that. Right. Just to be clear. Right. <laughs> yes. We yes. Mm -hmm. okay. We were fulfilling a, an obligation to meet uh, a, a requirement. That was all. Okay. We were just setting the prices. We weren't necessarily. Right. Um, so, yeah, since this. This is good information, and I, th I think I would appreciate some additional we'll look at it and yep. some additional thought, mm -hmm. and then we can put that on the agenda for next uh, for next meeting. If that's enough time, uh, next or Thursday, next month, right? Uh, we, or, okay, meeting next week. We are meeting next week, or or October. maybe for October. We can, yeah, mm -hmm. well, we can put it on the October agenda. <laughs> She and I are both off the policy committee meeting as of November, so she's going for November. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so on to our um, next um, business item, um, school committee November 2022 election. Mm. I will share. Okie dokie. Uh, so I don't know if, if <coughs> you are leading this. Or do you want me to give an overview? You of what? And, yeah, why don't you okay. Well, uh, <laughs> school committee, in your packets, you have this document. Uh, folks at home, I hope you can see this chart. What we tried to do here was show for the four towns uh, who's currently in seats. And um, these horizontal bars are not to scale. It, it got a little wonky at some point. Mm -hmm. We tried to show who's currently in a two-year term, um, which seats are on the ballot for this November, uh, which folks are running again, which folks are not running again. Um, so uh, going from the top in Bernardston, uh, Jeannie Milton. Uh, has been in a, uh, she's in a seat right now. Um, Jeannie has not submitted uh, papers to run. So there is a seat in Bernardston on the ballot this November that will be a four-year seat. It's the seat that Jeannie's currently occupying. 
Uh, Melissa is uh, currently a member. That seat is up this November. Melissa has filed papers uh, to run again, and that is a four-year seat. Uh, there is, for Bernardston, a vacancy currently. It is the seat formerly held by Jim Bell. There are two years remaining on that seat, so it will, there, there is an opening. We don't have someone as of just yet. Uh, well, no one has filed paperwork for that seat. Uh, so I think the committee will be talking shortly about the write-in process. Um, that would be for the two years remaining on Mr. Bell's seat. Uh, Leiden, Karen uh, is not running again. That seat is up in November for four years. Uh, Michelle is serving right now. She is in the middle of her, her four-year term, so she doesn't have to run again. She has two years remaining on that term. And Robin Knipe, a former school committee member, that seat has been vacant. Uh, it is, there is an open seat on the ballot for two more years. Uh, no one has filed papers for that seat. In Northfield, uh, Raina is currently serving as chair. Uh, that seat is up. She has filed paperwork. She's on the ballot. That's a four-year seat. Stephanie Winslow uh, has not filed paperwork. Um, that is a four-year seat up in November. Steve Martin has just joined the committee. Uh, he is, Steve is filling the seat formerly occupied by Julie Burke. That seat has two years remaining in it. Steve is on the ballot for that two-year uh, term. Mm -hmm. In Warwick, David is not running again. That is a four-year seat up. Uh, not on, it's, there is an opening. There is no one who's filed paperwork for that seat. And Alan Genovese and Nathan Schwartz, current members, uh, are in the middle of their four-year terms. They are not on the ballot. They have two years remaining in their terms. Questions about the, the, what seats are open or the term? Okay, so what this means is there are three people who have filed papers uh, and are on ballots. Uh, Raina, Steve, and Melissa. Uh, I am sad to reiterate that we have some members here who will not be running again. Jeannie, um, Karen, um, David Stephanie. and Stephanie. Right. So there are currently 12 met members on the committee, three from each of the four towns. Uh, we'll be talking about Warwick shortly. Uh, we've got an open seat in Warwick. Should Warwick um, leave the district uh, on July 1st, 2023, um, de facto, those three members would no longer mm -hmm. be part of this committee. The committee would be down to nine members. So there are six, have I got this right? There are six, hang on one sec. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are nine seats open on the November ballot. Nine seats are open. Three people have filed paperwork. Nine are open. Is that right? Yep. So there are six seats that currently don't have anyone uh, who has filed paperwork. And that's the end of my informational talk. Um, so for anyone who might be interested in running for school committee at this point, um, you can run as a, a write-in candidate. Um, the process is pretty simple. You let everyone know that you want to be a write-in candidate and have them write your name on a blank spot in the ballot. Um, anyone from the four towns uh, all four towns vote for all of the seats. Um, so someone from Northfield can vote for a candidate and write it someone's name for Leiden or Bernardson, um, as well as Northfield and Warwick. So um, one thing to keep in mind, um, and it's, it's important if you have a name that's not terribly unusual um, and they're could possibly be another person with a same or similar name in your town. Um, the person writing your name in should also include your address um, so that you can be distinguished from the John Smith, you know, you're the John Smith on Main Street um, <laughs> that distinguishes you from the John Smith who lives on North Street. So, um, 
but that's pretty much what it is. If your name gets written in, um, that's a vote for you. So that's okay. that's that. Anything to add? Anyone? Yes, Jeannie. Um, I just wanted to say it's been my honor and my privilege to serve on the school committee for eight years. Mm -hmm. And when I initially ran for school committee, I felt that eight years would be my limit. Um, time to bring some younger minds to the school committee. So. Well, thank you. We're going to miss having you, yeah, your contribution, sure. Appreciate and your experience. Yeah. <laughs> I will. Yes. I'll also add, um, if it's easier for people who are interested in running, um, writing can also be a sticker in. Um, as long as the sticker fits on the ballot, all the information is on Secretary Galvin's site. Um, you can print the name and the address um, on a two, it gives the dimensions, um, but it's really a two inch by a quarter inch. Um, and so that is really easy to pass out stickers with your name pre-printed with your address that people can put right on the ballot. Um, voters can bring in information when they go and vote. So another option is if you just printed your name and address out and you hand those out to people. Um, you can't do it within 150 feet of the polling <laughs> of that day. Um, but also, you know, there's definitely some um, really simple ways that people um, can get on. And if you are written in, um, you still have to accept the position also. So um, that is the second step um, to that. So your friends who write your name in <laughs> need Correct. to get your consent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's it will all, be verified yeah. that you want, you're willing to. It's also good practice to let your town clerk know. Give them in the election committee within your town a little bit of a heads up and know that you're running a writing campaign because that is tallied by hand um, a lot different. So that can take a little bit longer on election night. Um, again, big picture, and I'm hoping we'll have names in these category in these open seats. Just a comment. So this provides some clarity to a meeting we had before to try to sort this out. Uh, you probably already have done this, but if you haven't, this would be good information to send to the clerks in the town halls and actually have this posted in the respective town halls so people in the communities will know of um, what's happening in theirs as well as the larger communities. Be very helpful. We will. Uh, and Joanne made a really nice, um, we have to share this information with uh, Secretary of State Galvin's office and Joanne did a really nice job, job on a one pager that was clear so maybe we'll look at this look at that and figure out which one the clerks might find more useful and send we'll, we'll send that okay and I will say just oh, um, go ahead Karen oh I uh, was just going to ask Michelle who it should go to in Leiden we don't have a town clerk correct yes we do we do we have a temporary uh, who is she it? Did, she did the um, primary on Monday, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday. Um, okay, I'll, I'll catch up with that later. <laughs> so what I was I was just going to say that um, <coughs> school committee is it it is a bit of a daunting task, um, but it's also really satisfying work. Um, you know what's more important than educating our children, and we um, it's it's work that um, is worthwhile and we'd love to have some some company many hands make light work so. thank you okay thank you right. so item number two bnc tv district reps okay thank you to uh bob raymond um of bernardston for bringing this back to our attention i think we talked in the spring um, with some group of school committee buildings and grounds, buildings and grounds. Uh, because Comcast wanted to run a line for the town of Irving um, so in the process of researching uh, the district's responsibilities with uh, regarding that request um, we spoke with Otis and uh, Tyler of BNC TV and we got our hands on the original MOU from 2002 <laughs> 
and the bylaws. Uh, school committee, the bylaws that you received electronically were complete. The paper copy in your packet tonight is not complete. It is missing uh, a crucial page. I've got this up on the screen. Um, the oh, I didn't print that one. <laughs> memorandum of understand. So there are two. There are two uh, issues. I would not, not issues. Two points I would like to bring to your attention tonight. The first is the original MOU has some um, welcome language about the opportunities for students that the introduction of BNCTV uh, presented uh, to the school district. And I would say we have not fulfilled that promise uh, in terms of collaboration with our colleagues at BNCTV. And I know Tyler has all kinds of ideas about what we could be doing with students because he has sent me a memo <laughs> outlining his ideas for how we could uh, bring, give students opportunity uh, to produce content, to learn technical skills. So the MOU from 2002 talks about that. Uh, the MOU talks about the initial board of directors, which uh, included some district representatives. Uh, the bylaws, starting at the bottom of page one, and again, I'm, I'm so sorry, you are missing, I think, pages uh, three and four of your paper packet, or at least mine was. Just four. So okay. On, on the ones I've lined didn't have. Okay. Two and four. Well, two and four. It's the bad. Well, that's even odder. Yeah. Okay. So up on your screen, <laughs> um, we've got the bottom of page one. So there's uh, section 3.1 is composition in terms of initial directors. I'm going to scoot through that. Uh, section 3.2. Um, in the middle. Uh, we've got two directors to be nominated by the Board of Selectmen from Berniston, two directors from Northfield, and two directors nominated by the Pioneer Valley Regional School Committee uh, to serve for staggered three-year terms. So there are open seats. We have not been, um, we haven't had folks from the district on the BNC TV board. I believe uh, Bob would be willing to talk with folks about what is involved in this opportunity. Um, so, on, uh, again, one item is, uh, it's, this is an opportune time, it came up again because of some question about running a line for birds, for Irving, for their, what, they're doing something. I knew it about four months ago, it's gone. Uh, hmm. We will look, I am committing to you, we will look as a district, as admin, and as this school, how can we do, how can we provide more opportunities to students uh, through BNCTV. We'll start that conversation. School committee, you have an opportunity to have folks on the BNCTV board. So I'm reminding you of that and Raina, not sure how you want to manage this. So just as a point of clarification, um, are they a school committee members that are appointed or does the school committee appoint someone from the district? It, it looks like uh, they do not have to right. be from the school committee. Right. Okay. Well, you could put a student, maybe. That's a great idea. Isn't There's that a great idea? That would be very, that's a very creative idea. Yeah, yeah. so we'll, we'll give that some thought and we'll give, um, try to think about we could. There might be students. They better be freshmen because it's a three year term. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, there could be students doing or seventh and doing Melissa. Media. There is an, the school committee appoints three people. Right. There's two directors for three year terms. And then on the very bottom, the one that I have sent out from you, Patricia, <coughs> is formatted much nicer than what's being shown. Is it the MOU or the uh, bylaws? Oh, JK. Hold on. <laughs> bylaws. Hold on. The one that you just emailed us. I just pulled up. That emailed. is, I thought, this document. Okay. Um, no? Well, I'm seeing something different. But it may, all, right there. There it is. Yep. Yes, it is that document. On the very bottom, one director appointed for a one year term. Oh, the, so the school committee does two I three think year that's, terms. That's the initial, I think that's the initial board. Right. 
director. Mm -hmm. So if you go up a page to the bottom of page one, am I reading this wrong, Melissa? Yeah, that was for the initial. Oh, okay, but okay, got it. Yep, the initial board. That's where I thought you were reading the from. The very okay. first time they had a board. Again, I apologize that I you don't have the right paper right. copy in front of you. So we'll get pages, the even pages. Yeah. We're missing. <laughs> It's in your email, um, but I think it's it's exciting. I you know reading through the documents, it, it made me think you know there there are lots of opportunities to get students involved. Mm -hmm. Anyone who might be interested in film or pr yeah. production or mm -hmm. um, you know I think it's, it's there's a, a untapped potential there. Any further discussion on that one? Will, will that be a discussion that uh, Tyler will share his ideas, or you'll? Uh, um, I think I'd up? like to, uh, yeah, ty bring Tyler to John Carter and have John uh, be the person who convenes the conversation sure. in this building. Yeah. yeah. The the question of nomination uh, by school committee, I leave. You know, that's you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And then student enrollment update. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, these are the September 1 numbers. Um, these numbers have already changed. Uh, we have some new school choice uh, students uh, who've enrolled via school choice. Uh, we've had some new move ins since this date. Um, I want to re back to uh, the last time I shared enrollment figures with you. School committee, you provided some very helpful questions and suggestions about additional context uh, that this report could provide. I have been working on that, and I mentioned to um, Member Martin before the meeting that uh, we've, we're actually taking a look at 25 years worth of enrollment, um, looking at enrollment in each of the buildings, including Warwick and Pearl Roads, uh, looking at school choice information, um, students coming in, students co going out. Um, uh, so I don't have that context for you here. It is pretty fascinating stuff, and I think what we'll do is prepare a separate presentation on student enrollment. Uh, I know that the Six Town Regionalization Planning Board has been hard at work looking at enrollment um, also. Uh, so, um, in general, uh, we have more kids. Our enrollment continues to go up in general. Uh, we're down in this building, and I think that's largely attributable to the um, departure of students last spring in uh, our rising ninth graders, that large cohort that left. Uh, but in the elementaries, for sure, we have more kids, um, and we are getting new kids into this building. Patricia, do you have those new numbers? Which numbers? You said numbers. some of these numbers have changed. Uh, I did not. I asked Dottie Bokan to produce this document for the first day of the month. Mm -hmm. So to keep this document consistent, um, I'd, I'd prefer to not change this one. Mm -hmm. um, I can, I'll bring you the October numbers, and those will show the changes, Jeannie. OK, so overall, there's been an increase. Yes. And maybe to save yourself some work, if you do go to the um, Six Town Regional website, because we've had, um, we worked with Desi and we worked with Mars and some others to <coughs> document and spent a lot of time on that. And then um, Mike, uh, one, of, one of our members, has uh, produced some excellent um, mm -hmm. enrollment slides that show the trends and what's happening. I will, uh, thank save, you. Save Ellen, that, I, yeah. Thank you for reminding me of their website. That is a helpful site. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Could you please remind me what out the out of district is that just any type of school choice out? No, no that's, that's that's not school choice. Those are students whose special needs are such that we okay, are not able to thought. serve them here. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Further questions? Okay. Will we move on to Warwick Transition? Um, Diana, would you want to come up to the table? 
and Michelle Jerusso is chair of the Warwick Transition Committee, which continues to be um, a hardworking, cheerful, creative, patient, tenacious group of people. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad I had this experience over the past eight months or so. Uh, so Michelle will be um, leading tonight's presentation, and Diana is here as uh, a representative of the Warwick Group working on the transition. And with that, I hand it over to you, Michelle. And I'll try not to cough. <coughs> it's a cold. It's not anything else. I, I've been testing. <laughs> so the purpose of tonight's presentation is to provide you an overview of the process and the timeline, to introduce the two draft agreements that we've been working on very diligently, and to gather your initial feedback. Um, what we realized is um, not many of the committee members um, may have um, understood the details that we were working on. So the committee um, consists of myself as chair, Karen O'Neill and Nathan Schwartz. The Woolwick Town re representatives are Diana Noble, David Young, Jess Marshall, and Susan Hollins. Jesse's role is to approve the three documents that we're going to uh, finally come up with and uh, support and guidance for us, but ultimately for Woolwick. Diana, you can interject anytime. Um, so the agreement documents consist of the transition <coughs> agreement, the tuition agreement, and the retiree cost participation contract. And the purpose of the agreement documents is to provide a roadmap for the stakeholders to facilitate a transition that is orderly, positive, and equitable, to explain how Warwick will meet its future financial obligations, to clarify the tuition for Warwick students attending PVRS, and to secure DESE's approval for this transition. Mm -hmm. The timeline will be September and October of this year, where the school committee discusses and votes on the three agreements. November and December, Warwick submits a final application to DESE, and July 1st, 2023, Woolwick will open its new school district. So the committees, the school committee's next steps is the first reading, which is tonight, of the transition agreement and the tuition agreement. On October 13th, the second reading and a vote by the school committee. You will be voting on the transition agreement and the tuition agreement, and it will be the first reading of our retiree cost participation agreement. Um, and I'd just like to say the retiree cost participation agreement includes OPEB costs. Some of you have heard about OPEB, and that might be more what you're used to, but I just wanted to explain that some of that, you know, is in there. Um, because I know from my own town, they wanted to know how OPEB uh, was going to get paid. Mm -hmm. And on October 20th, the second reading and vote will, re will include this retiree cost participation contract. Do you have the transition set up? Okay. A closer look, we will now look at the transition agreement. I'm gonna make this nice and big. Oh, Renee, I have this for you. Did everyone get a chance to look at this ahead of time? Is this online as well? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, it? yes, it's it on is the, on the website. If you go to the district website, uh, 
and go in the top menu bar to the school committee option, uh, click on that. There, there's a drop down menu and you'll see Warwick transition as one of the options and these documents are available on that page. You're welcome. So should we read through it? How do you want to go? Diana? Uh, is this on? Yes. Uh, I would just like to take a moment and say that uh, the work we've done on this transition agreement, and I see this transition agreement as sort of being the umbrella discussion, well, the result of many, many discussions. Uh, it's been uh, a very rewarding process after many years where, where it was a little bit less rewarding. Um, it's been a very rewarding process and I would like to point out that it wasn't just those folks that we listed are in the room um, I've gotten to know Jordan a little bit he's jumped right in the deep end of the pool after joining the district he's been there for mm -hmm. uh, discussions that particularly the ones that have to do with money but of course everything has to do with money um, we had the pleasure of having uh, the special ed director with us when we were talking about uh, those issues um, Patricia has been an absolutely stellar partner throughout uh, and has reached out to her staff along the way. So we are bringing this to you after uh, many discussions that have reached through, throughout mm -hmm. the district in many, many ways. So uh, I am, of course, uh, open to any questions along the way that can help. And if, if it needs to be read and you don't want to read, Michelle, that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, actually, my eyes kind of, it's kind of small. So um, if someone um, thinks that we should read the whole thing out loud, just let me know. The highlights? I don't, yeah. yeah. Do you want the highlights? Yeah. Ask, ask. I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Um, tuition agreement, um, as opposed to uh, school cho elementary, is this tuition? You want to do that? I can take that if you'd like. Could you explain um, that, please? So the transition agreement is the, the umbrella. Within that transition agreement, at one point, it mentions that uh, Warwick is uh, planning to open its own district, reopen its elementary school, and we're working on the, the tuition agreement so that our con kids um, continue to uh, attend Pioneer. At the same time, it would have been uh, unfeasible for Pioneer to say, yes, we promise to take your kids at school choice pricing. So the mm -hmm. tuition agreement is for uh, Warwick kids to attend grades seven through 12, and any of the details that might possibly come up over the years when that happens um, agrees to how much uh, we would pay per child, um, but it's all for uh, Warwick students to attend Pioneer. Uh, the Pioneer High School, sorry. It has nothing to do with the elementary students. Is that good? Is that? And so the elementary kids who may choose to come to Northfield or even Bernardston in school choice, how will that work? Uh, your committee would have to send a set of school, and tell me if I'm stepping on here, but it would be per your decision on which, how did you set your school choice policy? Mm -hmm. and, and similarly for Warwick, the Warwick School Committee will need to vote whether it wants to participate in the state's school choice program. Mm -hmm. uh, if it does, Warwick el elementary students could choose to attend uh, NES, they could choose to attend this district, or they could choose to attend Athol or some or other place. Or and or students who are Northfield residents or Bernardston residents could choose to go to Warwick. Right? Correct. It could be a, Correct. there could mm -hmm. be a back and forth yep. inflow. And so is there a reason why the portion of school choice or at the elementary level is not part of this umbrella? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Warwick will be providing the, the, uh, the public, the main public education choice for elementary schools, for our elementary school students. Um, so the transition is to Warwick becoming its own district. However, we are only going to operate an elementary school. Mm -hmm. Melissa, are you asking, I'm trying to get to the heart of the question because I, I think there's another layer that I'm not understanding it. Um, so the state will, will uh, set what the uh, school choice 
tuition would be. So we wouldn't we wouldn't be doing that in a tuition agreement. So the state would establish that. The WOA committee would vote to accept school choice and to yep. and and just like you explained. And then that the school choice would be a matter of uh, it's not like setting a tuition for Vernon or some right, other I district. Right, I know it exactly. I, another way to put this is um, school choice is not something that Warwick and Pioneer would um, have some bilateral agreement about. Right. Exactly. That is that is something that the state runs. And each district has to, the, the assumption of the state is that a district participates in choice unless by a certain date in the spring the school, dis, the school committee votes not to participate. Okay. So we, don't, we would not have an agreement with them about right. that. Right, so why doesn't that also go to the high school level? Because they're not offering a high school, so they can't participate in high school school choice because they don't have a high school. So, so... So if, they're, so if their students wanted to go from Warwick, right, I'm just trying to figure yep. out why, yep. why it's divided into two. Um, so if a student wanted to go to Mahar, do you, are you creating a tuition agreement with Mahar? Do you have to create? No, no. So that, I guess that's where I'm getting stuck. It's why? similar to Irving where Irving doesn't have a high school, so they cho they tuition into Pioneer. They, they have tuition agreements with two, two districts. They can go to Kilmontague or to Pioneer. But they can school choice anywhere. At the it's elementary okay. grades, oh. they may school choice <laughs> anywhere. OK. It, we can take this off. No, th it's this fine. is good because it's, members of the public will have these yeah. questions. Yeah. 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 Correct. Oh, See that—that right. that okay. was my. No, I didn't, I, right. There's a huge difference mistake. between school choice and tuition. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to understand: is why are we doing tuition as opposed to school choice? So um, the key is, um, as was noted about the Warwick School District is responsible for its K through 12 students. So it has an elementary school to take care of the K through six. Since it doesn't have. Um, and I was superintendent years ago at a union, so it's working similar to that. You can make an arrangement with a uh, preferred uh, school district, in this case it's Pioneer, to have the uh, students' tuition there. Um, if parents choose not to, then it would, it would uh, transpire exactly how it would happen at Pioneer. Um, if parents' choice, let's say, to Greenfield, then that's going to be charged against uh, the Warwick School District's um, foundation and the money that follows or gets subtracted. Does that clarify? Um, here, please. OK, okay. Yeah. as a member of this committee, from subcommittee from the start, I think there was, there's a historical connection that Warwick wanted to honor. And certainly our students have a history of, your students have a history of being a part of this school. It is also very much to our financial benefit to have tuition paying students versus choice paying students. <clears throat> and again, they can uh, choice in to um, a high school unless they offer uh, choice to their district, and it's an elementary only district. Therefore, they have to pick a, uh, a school of choice, and we're lucky to be that school of choice. This has nothing to do with us versus them. You know, be, you know choosing us as tuition. I'm just trying to understand the difference between school choice um, versus tuition. I'm seeing your hand in the, uh, <laughs> yeah. do you mind if you call on yeah. him, Chair? Yes, and that's, I'm, yes, please. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, you Can you come to the, one sorry. of the, to the mic? Yeah. That's uh, right, it's just so, the. Yes. Right I'm sorry. Yeah. Find the club. I'm Walwick, uh, select board chair, and I'm on the education committee and the pro time committee. Uh, I will also note, and you hit <coughs> the important points, so it's a financial, you did, Finan both of you did. Financial, mm -hmm. uh, financially, it's a better deal for you. Financially, it's a better deal for you. Uh, there's a historical connection that mm -hmm. both towns recognize, or the district and the, mm -hmm. and the town recognize. Um, 
we'd like to keep that going, including our after school programs and our um, summer programs, which we've uh, honored bringing people in from Pioneer. And lastly, the piece that wasn't brought in there was that it was strong, it was Desi's strong preference that we look this direction. Mm -hmm. uh, there had been some other feelers out there from other uh, districts, but the feeling was this would this would be in the best interest of the town in the new district and a pioneer, well financially, and to settle some of the some of the past uh, bumps in the road. I guess is the best way to put it. So they strongly recommended we follow this path. Mm -hmm. Melissa, I'm happy to pull together the legal citations and the regulatory citations. No, this is, I think that you're, what you are asking is what folks in our yes, communities will ask. So why don't, on our end, we'll pull together some of the citations that clarify the differences between school choice and tuition uh, and why the agreement has been structured this way. Is that, okay. Jeannie? Uh, the way I'm understanding it, Warwick can only school choice for elementary schools because they will only have an elementary school. Mm -hmm. If they vote to do that, yes. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm just saying, yep. that's how mm -hmm. I'm keeping it yep. straight in my mind. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. And then uh, lastly, just to frame again these three documents, the one that uh, Diana and Michelle are walking us through now is the transition agreement. The transition agreement describes how this separation, this is an amicable divorce. Right? That's one way to think. We're separating. We, are, we, are, we have been united. We will not be united. And we are now proceeding with, this is, this is the amicable and clear how the transition will happen. The second document that will be shared is the draft tuition agreement. And that clarifies how the money would work for Warwick resident students who attend Pioneer. What that tuition looks like, what's involved with it. The third agreement, which we are not sharing with you tonight because we're, we're, we're very far into it, but not, it's not ready to be shared, is the, gosh, David came up with that great name, retiree cost, cost participation contract. contract. And as Michelle noted, that's the uh, OPEB, uh, the really detailed, wonky, mm -hmm. how all of that liability will be taken care of. So how the divorce happens, the money for tuition, and the long-term financial obligations that Warwick has to the district. So. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. And I, I will note that uh, we did struggle with naming for a long time <laughs> for that last one that, as you can tell by Patricia, uh, struggling over it. Um, and you will find references to it still in the transition agreement, because we missed it, um, that still <laughs> refer to it as the XYZ <laughs> agreement. <laughs> <laughs> the two are the same. The letters, that's the money one that we're not quite ready to share yet. Mm -hmm. So I think um, if you want me to, I could go through the highlights of the transition agreement and at, stop and ask questions. Mm -hmm. Diana or Patricia or any, you know, anyone on the committee could answer them. So um, as you can see, the first part is legal ease uh, writing. So we have the effective date of the withdrawal will be June 30th, 2023. The tuition agreement is for Warwick students in the grades provided to go to Piney Valley Regional School on a tuition basis. And we, we can go over the tuition agreement um, separately also. Warwick's liability and commitment for regional debt and costs. This section of the transition agreement makes references to sections of the district agreement signed in 1991 and amended in 1999. So it talks about, you know, whether or not we have outstanding debt. Mm -hmm. uh, it talks about capital expense, emergency expense, and then pension and other re retiree benefits as operating costs. If I'm going too fast, please stop. Or if you have questions. Um, PVRSD uh, assets owed and payable to Warwick. And this is where Diana uh, was talking about the XYZ agreement. We still refer to it as that. Um, Did David say something? 
Is that the retiree cost participation contract, I believe, is what yeah. David yeah. said. Yeah, so we'll <laughs> update that. It is. <clears throat> I was just trying to make a joke. <laughs> uh, as you can see, under the assets owed, uh, we broke out school lunch, lost book, regional transportation reimbursement, school choice, special education. Um, these are revolving accounts that we have agreed upon. And PVRSD will make the payment to Warwick within 60 days of receiving an audit. <coughs> Michelle, may I make a clarification here? Yeah. Uh, to make, so that uh, folks are aware, uh, the district has many other revolving accounts. Um, the, the working group went through each of those accounts carefully and made a determination as to which of the accounts it felt um, should be divided up, that, they're, they're, that Warwick was owed some portion of those accounts. So while here uh, the document lists five accounts, there are many others um, that we agreed uh, the district um, would retain in, in their entirety. And then the next section, um, number five, is transition agreement and students. And so we brought in <coughs> Christy Fontaine to help us um, with this and she spent a whole Saturday morning with us um, to help us um, decide what was law and what was doable under um, sharing of student information and so it is all spelled out in this section and then uh, amendments can be made upon the written consent of both parties and then we even talked about successors in the event PVRSD dissolves or merges with another entity and then the school committee chair and the town of Warwick will have to sign this and we're hoping that happens within the month the tuition agreement is the second document um, are there, any, are there any questions? I do. I have a question. Um, in section 4, 4.3, um, uh, statement 4.4, 4, is that, it, how, is that di a different, it, I'm struggling with the language. They look similar to me. Yeah. Ah. It's like a repeat of what, is, what was said above. <laughs> it, it is similar, but it is not exactly the same mm -hmm. in that, uh, as part of uh, fulfilling the, ne the, uh, uh, the wording of the district agreement, mm -hmm. we needed to pay back Warwick's entire share of the state loan okay. mm -hmm. uh, oh. before the end okay. of last fiscal year. So we did that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, but your the district is continuing to pay toward that state loan. So mm -hmm. a s small portion of what we're paying this year in fiscal year 23 is our last year as part of the district. Will also be paying. Will be double paying that okay. little piece. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's just a recognition, that's a recognition of that, that little that. piece. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. So in the tuition agreement, um, we had a, a purpose, term, and renewal. And it's a three-year renewable. And we did use portions of, uh, in writing this agreement, we used portions of Vernon, um, just little snippets of it. Um, and then we talked about the agreements, the tuition rate, transportation, sharing of student information again and students with disabilities and other unique needs and this is where Christy helped us all a, a lot and then the entire agreement force majeure and invalidity that every contract has
So a question about the transportation. Um, so will Warwick be paying the transportation costs for Warwick students, or um, how does that work? Exactly That's exactly what that says. Okay. Pioneer mm -hmm. is not financially responsible. Mm -hmm. um, it, there is a little bit of wording that allows for some uh, efficiencies in working together. I think that's what that means in the event Pioneer has extra space to enable transport, you know, just so that if there's a real. If there's a, just a tweak in the bus route, for right. one of the. But, um, for, to, to transport a Warwick student. But generally, it's our responsibility. Okay. No, that sounds good. Thank you. And for, can I just point out too, from a practicality point of view, my kids are older, but I still clearly remember this. Uh, the 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 school that we choose as Warwick as being our you know our our path to grade great for education for our Warwick students through grade twelve, uh, we are providing transportation for those students. That is part of the package. That is part of what we do for our students in Massachusetts. Um, families that decide to choice, school choice, to another district, they provide the transportation. Mm -hmm. I think, every, I see lots of nods. We all know what that means. Mm -hmm. so, um, mm -hmm. That is a very key practical difference between the two. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions on the tuition? Agreement? Now the question is, will you be able to explain it to your towns? <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot here. And, um, you know, we did, we did have to go through a lot mm -hmm. to understand the process and what we were doing because we wanted to make sure, I think anyone from the school committee can speak up, I wanted to make sure that we were looking at this district's um, not only financial obligations going forward, um, but what was going to happen to the children and their education. Yep. And um, we weren't always in agreement. But um, it was nice to set goals at the beginning of each session mm -hmm. and then go over at the end of the meeting to see if we had met our goals. And um, that, that was a good process. And I would highly recommend that going forward with any new process, that that is how we um, do it. And that's thanks to Patricia for teaching us those skills. All right, the retiree costs. Participation no. contract. It is in draft form and it is to be shared with you on October 13th. It describes the method for apportioning costs. It defines how Warwick will pay its share of expenses each year. It enumerates payment due dates and provides a method for dispute resolution. Is there any other questions? <laughs> yes. I just have a question about future after 23. Future capital costs in this building would be borne by the other three towns. The three triggers would just have to compensate in some way. Those three towns would borne the responsibility of putting a roof on this building for culture measures. Do you want me to do that? The district would be composed of the three remaining towns. Uh, and just like uh, with students who come to us from Vernon and pay tuition, we don't uh, bill the town of Vernon for some percentage of capital costs. It could, the, the district could certainly, uh, each year as it votes tuition, consider changes to the tuition amount. It does, yes. But um, Jess, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't repeat the question, but for the people who were um, on the Google Meet, 
the question was that um, in future capital costs for the uh, for the high school the middle and high school building um, are now going to be borne by three towns and whether that tuition agreement would would have some way of compensating for the um, for the portion that uh, Warwick is no longer assuming And actually, um, can you come up? <laughs> Sorry, I should, I should have asked everyone. So, uh, just as that is, we are presently caring for the building we do have. But I also want to mention that the tuition agreement is at a different rate than you presently get for school choice. And yeah. most school uh -huh. choice students are not adding anything to that. Mm -hmm. If, for an example, we were to go ahead and not, if your committee were not to support this, we'd be looking at doing an agreement with another district. Mm -hmm. We'd be giving them that extra money, mm -hmm. and then you'd be down even yeah. more than that. That's not, I'm just hypothetically speaking. So yep. there is an advantage of going with a higher rate, like you do with <laughs> Vernon, getting more than you would with school choice, and then, um, you know, and dealing with them there. But the realistic portion of this is that we are leaving the district. We'd prefer to keep a relationship with the district that, and I think the, the hard work done by the superintendent and these committees and the administrative su uh, support people has has really fleshed out a mm -hmm. lot of these issues. Mm -hmm. I understand your concern, but you know um, the option is for us to look another place, mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that's going to happen. So uh, then you lose out on both ends. So, but again, and I think that's why Desi supported both, yeah. and and you know that Desi was pushing both the Pioneer and us to look for this mm -hmm. agreement. Mm -hmm. so that we can prevent, continue to provide some support as well financially as we transition out. Mm -hmm. Melissa? Um, could someone share some rationale on why we're using language um, or what, why we're connecting our tuition rate um, with Warwick in connection with Vernon, Vermont, where if they chose not to tuition to us and we didn't have an agreement with them anymore, our language in this would say it would be connected to Vernon. So I'm wondering yeah. why we specified connecting it to Vernon, Vermont. Speci and I know they're the other tuition one, um, but thinking longevity, long term down the road, if Vernon does not tuition to us, um, I'm just curious why that language is here where it um, specifically identifies another tuition school district. Well, we wanted to be cons we wanted to be consistent um, in how we were charging tuition students. We didn't want to have different. I mean, how would you do it? Have tiers, or you know, we just said we have to charge any tuition student well, the that same. Uh, that would be policy versus. I would say that would be our. That would be a <coughs> choice within the negotiation of the tuition agreement. What we do with Vernon and what we do with Warwick, we would negotiate and agree upon. And so I would assume that would be the same. My question is why are we actually saying that with Vernon, Vermont? Why is their name mentioned? I, of course, we would want to be equal playing field, but we. Oh, no, I just I'm meant. I'm just wondering yeah. why, why it's written in the language. Oh, it is written? Yeah. Yes. yes. I it specifically you meant I identifies. Said it. Okay. No. no, 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 no. In the language, it specifically identifies oh. that we are going to mm -hmm. charge um, the same amount. So, You're right. yes, in practice, yeah. right? Of course, we would want the same. Yeah. But why is that in our legal language when that is a completely separate uh, tuition agreement with a different district? Diana? Um, and I suspect that the first step actually was because what you're doing with Vernon is actually based on a whole formula the state of Vermont does all of the hard work for. Um, so I think in my mind, certainly initially it was, we're just gonna use the Vermont rate. Wrong doc. But mm. what we realized is Wrong. you don't take the same Verm as the Vermont rate to the penny when you're working with Vermont. So it, it may not mean that it's right, but that's how we got to that. We want, wanted something that was was fair and that was already developed and that st using the state of Vermont as a model for that. Um, 
But then when we go there, we realize that the, 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 the district committee, school committee, you want the flexibility to not charge exactly what the state of Vermont is picking. So that's how we got there. It is also, it, it is a three-year agreement. Um, so you're right, it will have to be a living document. But um, yeah, I, that's how we got there. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, because how education is funded in Vermont is different than Massachusetts. Um, I would just advocate to remove any type of <clears throat> language that identifies another district in another town that we have a tuition agreement with. Because that is a completely separate. I think you. I think we can get to the nature of how we come up with that tuition agreement without identifying or saying it's connected to another district. Uh, this is this is a really helpful point. Uh, and as you as you raise the question and uh, listening to Diana's response, um, what I am reminded of is part of this is capacity. And this group was inventing a lot of stuff. Uh, and so inventing a formula for figuring out tuition would have been a whole nother chunk of work totally. and possibly totally. valuable work. And I'm writing this down. This is exactly the feedback yeah. we're asking for. So why doesn't the working group uh, revisit? You know, we could revisit it uh, in the next meeting. And Jess has a, a hand raised, and then Renee. <clears throat> I just had one other quick comment about that, which is um, I think part of using the, the actual language of, first of all, I want to say thank you, Melissa, that was an important point. <laughs> we have been working on the exactly that kind of language throughout to make sure we're not just describing something that could change and that it wouldn't be applicable. Um, I think part of using the Vernon yeah. tuition rate was that that was um, something that everybody understands already in our community and on the school committee. So I think that that was also part of mm -hmm. that language was that it's something that we all know. Thanks, Jess. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Just as food for thought for the committee, did you look into the amount that Irving pays to Turner's? Because I know through the time on this discussion, it was brought to this committee that Irving pays a separate rate Mm. to Turner's, they don't pay the school choice number, and I don't know what it is. So, and then that's both Massachusetts, two Massachusetts right. schools, so yes. it may or may not be just a resource. Great point. Mm -hmm. point. Thanks, Renee. Dave, go ahead. Uh, thank you. I was just uh, thinking maybe to uh, Melissa's point, if we're keeping it sort of um, less specific, that it could some, say something to the effect of tuition would be commensurate with other tuition agreements that the district has. Yeah. Um, Language wise, yes. Yeah. Right. And, and uh, it happens to be one other agreement, but, but it, uh, in that way, it's not specific. Mm -hmm. And I, I think uh, counting the angels on the head of a pin of what tuition could be is really not a great, personally to me, a great use of our time if there's already a satisfactory rate that mm -hmm. another entity is paying. Mm -hmm. Any? Uh, it was brought up what Irving's tuition is, and I believe the Irving tuition that is being paid to us was formulated quite a while ago. It was very involved. Yeah, and so I was and referring I'm not to sure. the Irving rate that's paid to turn to, turn to Gil not Monica. to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, thanks. I, I, I have a process question. Sorry, I didn't think of this working group. Uh, would the budget subcommittee want a presentation on the draft um, XYZ agreement, the, the OPEB agreement? Would the budget subcommittee want a presentation before it comes to the full school committee so that budget can digest the numbers and the formulas? Budget chair? Yeah, well, I'm looking at <laughs> other people on the budget well, subcommittee. Well, so it's I know <laughs> Nathan, right? No, you're not. Who's no, it's you. Michelle is the budget chair. Yeah, I know, but who oh. else? Steve. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Would you like it? 
Would you like to have him maybe? Yes. Sure. Okay, sure. great. Sure, thank yeah. you. Okay. We'll have him later. Thank you. And Jordan will be there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure that one gets on your calendar. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Me too. Great, and I just want to say thank you to the subcommittee. This is a tremendous amount of work, and you know these documents were are, were clearly a lot of thought and um, hard work went into them. So thank you for for all of that. I just say thank you for letting me add a couple yeah. points in there as oh, well, and yeah. thank you for the committee. We know uh, we're on a tight timeline. We yeah. know how difficult it is. I mean, I'm an educator as well, and he's an academic, so. We appreciate that. It's hard work. I mean, it's tough, but we've got to stick to it. That's what yeah. we yeah. Thank you. It is, yes, 8.59. Um, so any other business, we'll try to get through quickly, other business not anticipated um, at the time of posting? I don't have anything. Nope. Uh, subcommittee reports. Um, Negotiation, I don't have anything new to add. Um, building and grounds, anything to uh, add? Buildings and grounds has a posted meeting for next Monday. Um, we have a few agenda items. I can't think of them off the top of my head right now. Um, but yeah, we'll be having a meeting. I have something to add there. Uh, Nathan had brought up questions about security that's Mm -hmm. will be shared at the buildings and grounds. I don't know if I mentioned in my report, I'm meeting with Chief John Hall. Did I say this? You did not. Okay. I'm meeting with Chief John Hall early next week to begin review of our multi-hazard emergency plans. And that will go to buildings and grounds for, that, that's gonna take some work. Mm -hmm. Curriculum and personnel? Uh, we haven't met since the last meeting. Okay. Uh, budget subcommittee, I don't think you have no, We were going to start in October, but it looks like we may have one sooner <laughs> to discuss <laughs> the agreement. Policy. Yeah, okay. Um, the policy subcommittee. Could we? I'm oh, sorry. Yes. Could, could we wait until all members are present? Oh, until we move on. We're waiting for you. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. It's a job on yeah. A couple of kids. <laughs> kids. I'm sorry. sorry. That's what we're, we're about, kids. Um, so the policy subcommittee met on August 25th with Tracy Novick from MASC to discuss final steps in revising the revised policy manual. Um, and I spoke with her this week to go over every change that I had seen in the process of reviewing the manual um, and had not yet seen in the draft. And she has made many of those changes already. Patricia has shared um, the earlier draft with the admin team and requested comments. Not all have come back yet, but we approved some non-substantive changes, and those have been made to the new version, the new revision. We are meeting again next Monday, and the first reading of the policy manual will take place at our September 15th meeting. You should receive the updated version by late next week. Unfortunately, we're making changes at the last minute. Tracy has just a few items to change or add. The final step will take place on October 13th when the committee will vote on the revised revision. That will not be the end, however. The policy 
subcommittee and administration will continue to discuss, refine, and bring forward any changes to the school committee. So it will always be a work in progress. Finally, during this process, we have had uh, we have significantly re re reduced the size of the manual. I'm now involved in a task which is a compilation of a list of items that should be inserted in other manuals because they are chiefly procedural. That's a big task. Ultimately, um, other people have the first responsibility and that's outside the school committee. I imagine though the subcommittee would be collaborating on any changes when a request comes to us. So throughout this winding down process, the subcommittee has operated in the maximum of not allowing the perfect to become the enemy of the good. <laughs> we, we recall that parts of this manual are more than 30 years old. I recall 28 years ago when I came here and became a member of the faculty at Pioneer when this current building didn't even exist and there were a total of four computers in the whole school. Some of our added policies reflect the many changes since that time and I would like to take this opportunity to thank everybody who has participated, especially members of the committee who have subcommittee who have been so patient and the rest of you for all your valuable input and Tracy Novick for her expertise. So you should be getting something in your email next week. Look for it. <laughs> Thanks. I think we'll have, um, I did send out a list a while back, um, you may or may not remember it, uh, of the policies that we needed to take particular attention to that we would need to make decisions mm -hmm. on as a, as a group. An updated version of that will be sent in your email. Yeah. Where we're hoping mm -hmm. to send that out. Yep. Um, so that to help you sort of focus in on what mm -hmm. what we'll really need to discuss next time. Exactly. Thank you. Um, district agreement subcommittee. We Can have we not that, but I, as I said before, um, once the transition agreement was written, then we could um, meet again. Yep. So now that we have a living document, it's easier to look at the district agreement. That's good. And we already had an update from the Warwick Transition Subcommittee. So I think oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about dates. Yes. Um, Michelle, on your presentation uh, for the Warwick, what date in October are we... 18, was it? Or 13? I thought it was the 13th. Maybe it was the yeah. yeah. okay. Our meetings are the 13th and the 20th Because what I'm October. predicting, or what I'm seeing, is the 13th has the policy, oh. all, the entire policy vote on October 13th, and then we also have this vote on the 13th. That's, Maybe a long so, unless procedure. we're thinking the vote for the, pol for the policy is just going to be a, uh, that could be a heavy actually it's in uh, planning. It's a second reading, yeah. and we could have the vote then or at the meeting on the 20th. In thinking forward, I was just yes. noticing that we have oh, two subcommittees yeah. who have some big, potentially big, big stuff on the same day. Mm -hmm. You're right. I'll leave it up to the chair, I guess, yeah. to decide. Yeah, we'll, look at, we'll take a look yeah. at the agenda and try to distribute things. In a way that's more that's palatable. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just connect, I'm just writing stuff down on the dates. Yeah, and date. No, that's good. Yeah, we'll 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 try to organize that. You know, mm -hmm. Best laid plans. But. Um, staff, uh, we don't have an executive of session this evening. Um, personnel, staff changes. School committee has the staff changes document. Uh, changes since the last meeting are in red. There has been a flurry of hiring. Gosh, our um, building leaders and other supervisors worked so hard. And um, uh, Cindy was the last interim principal hired. And um, Christy Fontaine and Jim Trill really stepped into the breach there and uh, went over to BES and, and did a, a number of interviews and 
took over hiring while um, Cindy got into place. Uh, we, are, we are getting closer to being fully staffed, and the places where we have faculty level openings are uh, in this building, in areas that folks will recognize as traditionally hard to staff areas, and those would be math, the sciences, and special education. It is <coughs> frequently hard uh, to find staff. <clears throat> there is one position listed as being uh, posted that would be the high school tech and engineering position. We have a great candidate identified. Uh, they are getting some things in order in order to be able to join us. Um, a graduate student, uh, I conducted the final interview with that candidate the other day and came away so impressed. So that position, uh, we hope to have someone here for the beginning of October, second week of October. Um, so thank you to our hiring managers for their hard work. So I have a, a couple of questions. Yeah, we, we have a middle, a high school math teacher who's a long-term sub. Is he a certified teacher and does he have a math background? I think he has an economics background. Uh, he has applied for an emergency license. Okay. Uh, and he is a long-term sub because we didn't, we were not able to secure a certified high school math teacher in time to open the year. And we are still looking in the meantime? Yes, yes. Okay. And um, for several months, we've had a position on hold. Can you explain what that means? Oh, that, yeah, that should be a different, uh, the position is on hold because we're not rehiring for that position right now. Okay. That's Skip Zalneritis' uh, former position. Okay, so will there be uh, any tech instruction in the middle school? Um, I think that that tech and engineering position does have some middle school included, but I will triple check Karen to find out. Okay, thank you. Have you rewritten the job description for the curriculum coordinator and grants manager? Oh, I have something to say there. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you. Let me uh, get this high school. Um, uh, so that should not say to be posted. Uh, so I think I said to the committee at the last meeting, um, I am pressing the pause button on hiring there. Uh, Jordan and I met today with a retired um, principal uh, from the area uh, and are going to put out some um, contract work. Uh, so we're not creating a new position. Uh, we are going to hire people, this person, to take over some, uh, boy, Jordan has really stepped in here <laughs> in so many areas. Um, so we'd like to hire this person on a, you know, a contract by our basis to do some of the entitlement grant work. And so we, Jordan and I are drafting a scope of services for that. Uh, we'd like some help with, um, I'm looking at Renee, um, individual teacher professional development funding requests uh, and also help with the management of TeachPoint, which keeps track of uh, professional development and professional development points. Um, there may be other pieces of the job that will bring in someone else on a contract basis um, while we figure out what really makes the most sense here. Do we stay with this position? Do we divide it into an elementary and secondary position? Do we do, I don't know what, um, but it does seem to make the most sense to, given all the personnel changes uh, among administrators, hang on for a second and figure things out. Yeah, thank you for that. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I understand that. This district has a history of multiple shifts within the curriculum mm. venue, somebody being in charge of, or there's only one at the high school and nothing for the elementary school. And it feels like another shift is happening. Whatever happens with direction of curriculum, I hope it will be someone who knows mm -hmm. the district well, knows the staff well, and is data and research driven. Thank you. Great. All right, and any other miscellaneous updates? All right, hearing none. 
Our next meeting will be Thursday, September 15th, 2022 at 7 p.m. here and on Google Meet. Um, and I would like to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Oh, exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn our meeting, the meeting. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Uh, and go Who's ahead. Melissa Gary, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Jeannie Milton, yes. Karen O'Neill, yes. Stephen Martin, yes. Alan Genevieve, yes, yes. <laughs> and Michelle Jerusso, yes. And David has left the meeting, so I'll take that as a yes. And Raina Dastu, yes. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Brian Thank you. 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 Thank you.